So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to prompt Gemini AI like a pro in just five steps. And this is transferable across Claude, across ChatGPT, whichever large language model you are using, I'm gonna teach you how to prompt it like a pro. So if you've just started out in using a large language model, just a ChatGPT or a Gemini, then this video is for you, as they're gonna walk you through this simple process. If you have used it and you've got generic results, or quite robotic results, or even inaccurate results, again, this video is for you. I'm gonna walk you through this simple five-step system, and this is coming directly from Google itself. So I help people with online business, and I focused in on Google Gemini because it is Google. Now, the fastest growing large language model is actually ChatGPT, but because I focus on YouTube and Google, I have focused in on Gemini, but you can get exactly the same results with whatever large language model you are using. So let's dive straight into the training. So Google Workspace along with Gemini released this prompting guide 101. This is a quick start handbook for effective prompts. Now, if you have one takeaway from this, I would just Google prompting guide 101, Google Gemini, and you'll find this handbook. You might have to sign in or even leave your email to actually get a copy, but this was October 2024 edition. And if you do take one thing away, read this guide and you would be a much better prompt engineer. But if you think you haven't got time to read all of this cover to cover, I have distilled my five steps for you. Now let's go into Google Gemini for the first step. So whether you're using ChatGPT, Claude, or even Gemini, the first thing that I would encourage you to do is stop treating this like a search bar. There's a little window here where you can put in your prompt, but a lot of people are just using this with like three, five, or even 10 words, just like you would do in a Google search. But this is more intelligent than a Google search. So the first thing that I want you to do really is join in with a conversation with your large language models. Make it a collaborative conversation. So if I was just to give you an example, uh, if I wanted to review my website's homepage, I could put, hey Gemini, please review my homepage. I'd give it the URL and share your thoughts. I'm gonna hit send. This is just using the normal Google Gemini, if you don't have this, you can Google Google Gemini. You might have to log into Google, but I have a pro account because I pay for Google Workspace. But the free Google Gemini account is just as good. So here you can have a look and see what Gemini is doing. It's analyzing my homepage content. So it's going away, grabbing that link. It's analyzing my website structure. It's accessing my homepage content, unpacking the homepage, and then dissecting the value proposition. So you could actually minimize that again and just come to the answer. So here it's given a bullet point example. So it's got clear value proposition, problem solution focus, there's a strong call to action, excellent social proof and clear design. So I'm on a winner here that Gemini thinks actually my homepage is pretty decent. And then in summary, it's a highly effective landing page that functions as a powerful funnel clearly designed to generate leads for your free workshop. And then I could probably engage it more and act as a, a two-way conversation and open this dialogue with Gemini to say like, how would I improve this further? So all I've done then is I've just put, can you suggest some ways of improving my homepage so that I can get a higher conversion rate of email opt-ins? Because all I'm doing here is I'm positioning my homepage kind of like a lead magnet, a lead generation. So if people land on my homepage, they understand what I do, who I help, and if they want some help and it is them that wants the help, then where to go to get it. So I just have currently a free workshop on my homepage. So if they want some more free training, you can click a button and get that free training in exchange for an email. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go over to Google Gemini and hit send. And then again, it says just a sec, and then it's gonna think about this and iterate. And then again, you can have a look at fo focusing the homepage CRO, prioritizing email opt-ins, and then you can see what it comes in. So I'll hide the thinking, and then it can say that strengthen the above the fold call to action. So above the fold is anything before you have to start scrolling more benefit oriented headline, a sub headline, maybe with some bullet lists, optimizing that call to action button, like the button text or the button color, enhancing my social proof nearer the call to action, refining frustration section or problem and agitation. So if you're putting a problem in front of someone, you can 
agitate that problem a little bit more and then simplifying the final call to action like start your journey today or focus on a final pop-up or footer bar. So these are all great examples of how I can improve possibly the conversion of my homepage, but that was just a couple of prompts for me. So review my homepage and then can you suggest some ways of improving my homepage so that I can get a higher conversion rate of email opt-in. So that's two prompts. You can go back and forth on here and say, I really like number three. Please, can you give me some examples of how I can actually put this into action. So this is just an example of opening dialogue, using this as a conversation between you and the AI, so it gets to know who you are and who you serve and what your goals are. It's gonna be like a second brain for you to actually achieve that goal a little bit quicker. So that is step one, that's open dialogue. Use the AI in a collaborative way, back and forth, you're gonna get some better results that way. Second one is taken from the prompting guide 101 itself. If I scroll down here and if I zoom in, Google itself say there are four main areas to consider when writing an effective prompt. So if there's one thing you take away from this video and me summarizing this prompting guide, it's these four things. So persona, task, context, and format. So this is how you should structure your prompts. So the persona in this example, you are a program manager in said industry. The task is draft an executive summary to email to, and then the context is persona based on details about relevant program docs. And then the format is limit this to bullet points. So actually chunking down your prompt in these four areas will give the AI a little bit more context and a little bit more of a persona and understanding of what you want. So here's another one. Here are some examples in here, um, all, all the way through this document about persona, task, context, and format. So I'm gonna apply that to the prompt that I just did earlier about my homepage. So here, I'm just gonna open up another window. I'm gonna expand it out here so you can see exactly what I've done. And if it helps you, you could actually put here persona, task, context, and format to help you structure your prompts in this way. So you are a marketing expert in the online business space. So I'm asking it the same things, but just with a bit more structure. Task, critically appraise my homepage, timpeatman.com, and provide me with any suggested improvements that I could make. The contacts, I help founders and experts build intelligent online businesses without employees. I use tools such as YouTube, Google, and Kajabi. My message needs to reflect this. Format, limit your output to bullet points only. Thank you. So then the output is actually detailed, the plan here, and then it's actually looked through the headline alignment, the clarity, the problem identification, framework, methodology, testimonials, tool specificity, call to action, then audience targeting. And then you could put something like, um, what would you suggest I improve? And then you can just go back and forward with this. So it's got so much more context. So if I say that uh, I actually help people with no employees, I could elaborate on that. So explicitly state the no employees benefit. So what's so good about having a business with no employees? Integrate your core tools into the how. So mention more overtly YouTube, Google. Elevate the automation proof. Uh, let's have some testimonials in there, more testimonials identifying the automations that I help people implement in their online business. So it's also said sharpen audience naming. So this is just for the testimonials I have on my website. I could have them as founders or experts because these are the people who I help. And then actually it says could clarify Kajabi link. Now this is actually in my main header bar. I like to use really short one word links. Um, and that is probably something I would ignore. So you can go back and forth with this to actually give it some more information. So if I wanted to say, I wanted to position a free opt-in product here from my homepage messaging, you can go back and forth with it just so you can get a little bit more context and it's gonna give you that little bit better clarification in the output. So that's the second step then, is actually using these persona task context and format in every prompt that you make. Now, a lot of people do what's called one-shot prompting, which means that you'll put one prompt in like this one here, and then you just sit back and then take whatever is the output. But either two-shot prompting or multiple-shot prompting means you're having that dialogue and you're iterating on the output here. So if I was to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, I would ask 
the AI to sharpen up on some of its outputs. I would challenging it maybe on this final point here. I would ask it to maybe even say, speak to me like I'm 15 years old. So it would clearly enunciate everything that it's actually describing for you to take action on. So it's the back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It may take a little bit of time to actually do right off the bat, but it's gonna save you so much time if you're using that output in the long run. So that's the third step then, back and forth, use multiple shot prompting to actually get what you want. Then the fourth step would be to use some personal data in the mix. Now, Google Gemini doesn't share any of your personal data when you upload some tools from your Google Drive, but you can simply upload files or you can add from your Google Drive. And this is what I love about using Google Gemini because you can just link it into your business Google Drive and then just upload some copy here. So I'll give you an example. I'm gonna go over and have a look at some of my Gemini Gems. If you are interested about Gemini Gems, I can actually link to another video about Gemini Gems. But if I was given a YouTube description and then let's edit this gem, I have actually got some branding guidelines and brand message that I've uploaded to this gem. So it's going to remember things about me, my brand, and my guideline and my overall message. So if I was in this new chat and I wanted to upload something, it's going to use my data. Like I just linked out to my homepage, I could upload even more documents into Gemini or even ChatGPT or Claude, whatever you're using. So it's gonna get that more personal information that it can use. The more information you can feed these large language models, the better the output is gonna be. So that's the fourth step. So the fifth step is always have a human in the loop. Don't just follow steps one, two, three, and four, and then just publish whatever the AI spits out. I like to have a human in the loop and you should too. I like to do the 80-20 rule. So I like to use AI wherever possible. So I'd use AI for 80% of the work, but that final 20%, I always have a human in the loop to put my spin on things. So actually my homepage recently, I have revamped using AI. So I've gone through this four step process, even the fifth one, I've gone over the copy that AI has given me in order to get my message clear on my homepage. And I've done it for my sales pages as well. So going over everything that you put out into the world digitally, it's great to have an AI companion or a marketing expert going over what you've put out and suggesting amendments where necessary. So always have a human in the loop. That is step five in order to get the best out of whichever large language model you're using. For me, again, this is Google Gemini. So that's it, those five steps once more. Use it as a collaboration, whichever large language model you're using. Use this four part framework that Google's suggesting, or if you wanted to come up with your own, you can improve on that, like having a five part framework, maybe put some constraints in there or something. Then the third one is make it a conversation. The fourth one is put in some of your own spin, your own data, your own brand message on there to make it as personal as you can. And then the fifth one, have a human in the loop. So you or somebody else looking at that finished article, that last 20% before you hit publish. So I'm using AI more and more in my online business these days to save me up some time and get more clear on my messaging. But if you are interested in my full online business model, I've pulled back the curtain in some free training that I have for you. You can head to timpeekman.com forward slash workshop or just go to my homepage and click on get access now. It's a free on demand workshop. I walk and talk you through what I would do to build my digital online business today. And I show you how to make your first $1,000 of online revenue without having to start from scratch. So that link once more, timpeekman.com forward slash workshop get access today. It's super didactic. It's super actionable. Take notes and see how you can build your online digital revenue stream. So hopefully you found value in this video and you can practice your prompting like a pro within whichever large language model you're using. And I look forward to seeing you on the very next video.